Hello, I'm Tom, and this is my Amiga 1200. It's the same Amiga I've had since I was a teenager, well loved, well used, but for the majority of the last 20 years or so it's mostly lived in a cupboard. Last year though, on a whim, I decided to get it out for another spin and found myself actually spending a lot of time messing with the games I owned. And during this time I discovered one of these, a GoTech floppy drive emulator which allows disk images stored on a USB memory stick to be read as if they're an actual real floppy disk. Now, these GoTech drives seem very popular in the Amiga scene, but there's one big caveat that comes from using them. A lot of games, and I'd even say the majority of games, want to be loaded from the internal drive, known as DF0. The long and short of it is though, with the existing connector I bought, I could only use the GoTech as an external drive, known as DF1, limiting its usefulness. Now, I knew this when I bought the drive, I wasn't going in blind. I also knew a lot of people who buy GoTech drives end up just replacing the real internal floppy drive completely. But my Amiga's drive works just fine and that, that would stop me using any of the real floppy disks I own. So I dismissed that idea. There's also a DF0 selector available to switch around DF1 and DF0. But it doesn't work on the Amiga 1200 or 600. So that option was out as well. So with that, I decided to make my own solution. And right from the off, I decided I had to follow these rules. Number one, it had to be switchable without disassembling the Amiga every time I wanted to use it. So it needed a physical switch which I could switch back and forth to switch between the two at will. And number two, it has to be non-destructive. As I said, this is the Amiga I had as a team, and the last thing I wanted to do was cut holes in the case or even solder anything to the chips inside. I wanted to be able to just change it back to how it was in the first place whenever I saw fit. This thing holds sentimental value to me, you see. So, perhaps it's a bit daft, but it's my Amiga, my project, my rules. And with the added difficulty here, is I know nothing about electronics, I'm an absolute beginner at soldering. Yeah, that's right, whatever this thing was going to be, it was going to be really rough and amateur. I spoke of an engineer at work who has a lot of experience with hardware, and with his help, and some Amiga floppy drive pinout diagrams, we discovered that pin 10 on a floppy drive ribbon cable is the drive select pin. So the theory was if I was able to get a ribbon cable with three 36 pin drop points connectors, whatever you want to call them, and intercept pin 10 with a switch, I could then flip between the two of these three drops, essentially switching which drive was the active drive on that cable. I would need to supply power to both at once as well, of course, but this idea seems like a goer. Um, and thus began my experimentation. Uh, with the 1200 I felt I had two choices cables that would reach through the expansion port at the back here of the Amiga or through the trapdoor bay at the bottom then under the Amiga to the back. Um, opening up the Amiga I realized I'd need to have the cables running under the internal disk drive for the first option but it seemed like the best bet. But did I mention I know nothing about electronics? Well I'm clearly a bit of a fool as well and I didn't measure properly and assumed a ribbon cable and power cable of about 40 centimeters would easily reach through and I was wrong. They came up far too short, and this marked my first waste of money for this project. I was able to source a suitable cable from eBay, and my searches on the wider net came up empty as well, so it became clear I needed to make my own. Especially if I needed a ribbon cable with three connectors, because, because who sells these things anymore? So I ended up buying a meter length ribbon cable and three IDC connectors to attach to it, plus five meter length cables for the power and the switch cable. I also bought this Molex to floppy power cable to cut up and use the connectors as I couldn't source those either. The only problem then was crimping the IDC connectors to the ribbon cable. Now obviously as a newbie I didn't have the correct crimping tool. The other option I saw around on the internet was to use a vice. Well I don't have one of those either. And then late one night after a drink I thought how about I just use these two thick and heavy books? Which is this dark footage you're watching now. Yes, I'm a fool, don't try this. It didn't work. I just ended up breaking one of the connectors and I had to order a new one. <sighs> so I ended up just buying an IDC crimping tool for a tenner as well. This was beginning to cost me more money than I had anticipated. But once the tool and new part arrived, I was able to crimp the ribbon cable successfully. That bit was pretty easy once I got the hang of the crimping tool. And then I tested it in the Amiga to confirm it works, which it did. Finally, I was making progress. I ran the cable under the drive and out of the expansion port, which allowed me to measure what would be a good length, and I ended up cutting it to 60 centimeters, pretty much on the nose. Then I cut the power connectors and stripped the wires and then soldered the ends up. 
I'm not going to show close footage of me doing this because I suck at soldiering and I'll make experienced soldiers cry with my monstrous technique and, and joints. But I got it done and wrapped all the soldier joints with electrical tape to prevent shorts. The more experienced among us might use wire wraps and heat shrink those, but I don't have any. I tested it and powered the floppy drive and GoTech at the same time. Success. It's messy, but it works. So then it was time to make the switch. I needed a three pin two position switch, but I did have this eight pin three position switch lying around and figured it'll do. A quick test with my multimeter in continuity mode showed me which pins to use. The wire caught and stripped to length and they too got soldered on. I was getting closer. This was the bit I was nervous about. I used a Stanley knife, or you might know it as a craft knife, to cut the wire for pin 10 on the ribbon cable and then stripped that wire and soldered it onto the switch. This was surprisingly easy to strike my nerves. I was worried I'd mess it up and have to order yet more cable and yet more IDC connectors, but soon it was all soldered and taped up. So, one thing left to do, test the entire setup. So, plugged it into my Amiga, took a deep breath as I flipped the power switch and it worked. I was able to load from the floppy drive just fine. And then a quick switch over to the GoTech drive worked first time as well. Whew. After that, just a matter of fitting it all together. The ribbon cable fits fine underneath the floppy drive. The other cables go down the front side of the drive and then underneath through the gap between the case and the drive. And the port. And out the port, should I say. Not a problem. I was afraid of things getting too snug down there and perhaps creating shorts, but that doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Job done. With all the mistakes I made and having to buy that crimping tool, I, I did spend about 30 to 35 pound on finishing this project. Realistically though, I think we're looking at half that if you've got the tools available and don't mess up like I did. Hello, so we're several weeks on from the rest of the video now, uh, and I thought I'd demonstrate the device now I know everything rock solid. I've given it a decent amount of testing now. Everything seems fantastic. Uh, I was actually concerned that my terrible soldering would give way. Um, but everything seems really stable. I've had the, the GoTech drive on and off uh, a couple of times for, for different reasons and everything seems lovely and solid so no complaints there. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, let me just demonstrate how this works. So we're on at the moment. I've actually got this switch in position to uh, play from the uh, normal internal drive so let me just demonstrate by grabbing PowerDroid 90. In it goes, as you can see, just ticking along as it should. Works spectacularly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just turn the, uh, the Amiga off now. Let me just show you the back of this thing. So, there's the cable as I uh, put together. It kind of the, ca the the ribbon cable is a bit long in comparison with the rest of the cables, uh, but I can kind of live with that. It does give a, a little bit of slack at least. the The one thing that could have done with being a, a, just a bit longer as well is the the actual switch itself, as you can see here. You know, it's probably good that it just sits here, but uh, I would have liked a bit of slack just to just in case. But it sits there nicely. So, as you can see, it's in the position for the internal drive now. Um, just a matter of doing it flip. Like I said, it was a three position switch that I had lying around, so the middle position, not gonna do a thing, but if I put it to the, the left, and then turn back on. That disc is still in the drive, but it's not gonna do anything. Once it comes back on, that is. So, here you go. So, this is still in drive, it's not reading it up. What did we have here? So, hopefully, this should start that. There we go. Read it like a normal disc. Oh yeah, it does cause the uh, the 
disc read light to come on the Amiga as well. Let me just remove power drive. There we go. Working exactly as it should. And believe you me, no one is more surprised than I am. Just having a quick flick through to see what else I can find. No, that's a punishment, that doesn't work, I've tried it. Captain America. That's a tremendous sprite. State of that. Anyway, so again, just to demonstrate, I'll turn this off now at the switch on the power. Uh, turn this off on the switch at the power supply. Then again, around the back. Got a little. Where's the little switch gone? There's a little switch. All the way to the right for the internal drive. Power's going back on. Power's back on. It's no longer reading from the GoTech. Instead, we'll put Power Droid in because it's the disc that I've got to hand. Once again, we're loading PowerDroid 90. So there we are, we have a successful DF0 swapper um, made by a complete rank amateur. So if I can do it, so can you, I guess.